activate. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. So you're not always going to be treated fairly and justly. And when that happens, pray that God will reveal your false accusers, his lies, and his intents. But that's just the first one. The second one is expect false accusations and false witnesses. Don't be, don't be, uh, you know, don't be, don't be one of these people who go, oh, I just never knew it was going to happen. It is going to happen. It, and it has happened to some of you already. Psalm 27, verses 12 through 14, Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So what do we take away from this? How do we expect, and what do we do about false uh, accusations and false witnesses? You wait until the time is right to respond. You wait until the time is right to respond. How will you know? That's God's responsibility. That's God's responsibility to make it clear to you. The third thing is that there are people who want to ruin you. There are people that want to ruin you. Psalm 38, verses 12 through 15. By the way, isn't it interesting that all of these verses are in Psalms? written by David, who went through all of this. Man, did he know this firsthand. And he learned from it. Psalm 38, those who seek my life lay their snares. Those who seek my hurt speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. But I am like a deaf man I do not hear, like a mute man who does not open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear and in whose mouth are no rebukes. But for you, O Lord, I do wait. It is you, O Lord my God, who will answer. You don't have to respond to all of your accusations and challenges. You don't have to respond to all of them. But when you do, speak only with the truth and with integrity. Exactly the way Jesus did. He didn't respond to all of those charges. Oh, no, no, that's not true. No, no, this is what I meant. When I said this, this is what I would mean. No, he didn't do that. There was all these charges and accusations, and he just remained silent until it was the right time to say something. And when he did, he spoke with truth and integrity. Speak with truth and integrity. And listen to this. Truth and integrity don't do this. Well, he hit me first. Truth and integrity just speak. Truth and integrity. And the Bible says that you are to be a person of truth and a person of integrity. You are to act in truth. You are to act with integrity. You are to speak truth. You are to behave with integrity. And it's a little tough to get into one of those situations where you you are being accused of all of these things when everybody knows that you're a liar and you haven't acted with integrity. So truth and integrity isn't something that you just decide to do when you're in trouble. It's a lifestyle. It's the way you are to live your life, in truth and with integrity. Which brings us to the fourth principle, and that is expect people to hurt you. You're going to be hurt. You are going to be hurt. Sometimes you're going to be hurt by your own. Sometimes you're going to be hurt by people that you thought loved you. Sometimes it's intentional. Sometimes it's unintentional. You know, I... uh, let me share just out of a personal, personal note on this. Uh, I met, I, I, I came across a person this week who um, a few years ago um, all of a sudden wouldn't speak to me, was really, really upset with me. And I could tell. I could tell she was upset with me. And, I mean, I would say hi, and she would just turn and walk away. And, um, no, it wasn't Marcia. Although she's wanted to do that a few times. And she just was really upset with me about something, and I didn't know what. And I wrote to her, and I said, you know, I obviously have offended you, and I, am, I'm, I really want to know what I've done because I'd like to make it right. Never heard from her. And you know the principle of forgiveness? We've talked about this when we've studied on forgiveness. How forgiveness is that you offer forgiveness, but it's not forgiveness until it's received. You know, that's, that's the principle of forgiveness. Jesus offers you forgiveness, 
But it, you're not forgiven for your sin until you receive the forgiveness. And so when we have people that are offended at us, upset with us, we have to be willing to forgive them. But if they're not willing to receive the forgiveness, or people that have offended us, we have to be willing to offer the forgiveness. But if they're not willing to receive the forgiveness, the cycle hasn't been completed. And this cycle had not been completed. Apparently, I had offended her. And I wanted to ask, I, I, wanted, to forg- I wanted forgiveness, but she wasn't willing to complete the cycle. And so um, we went through, and it, it lasted, I don't know, three years or so, I don't know, maybe more. And there was just no communication. I talked to her, her husband one time. I knew that he knew you know, what was going on, and I wrote to him. Didn't answer me. Wouldn't answer me. I saw this woman this past week, and all of a sudden, there was, I saw her, and it was one of those things where we just kind of ran into each other. You know, it's like something that, the, you know, those divine appointment type things. And I ran into her, and I said, I said, before I said anything, she said, hi. Hi. She said, how are you? And I said, I'm really, really well. And I said, I want you to know that I've done something that has offended you. And oh, no, 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 it's over with. And she gave me a hug. To this day, I don't know what I did. (laughs) Uh, But you know what? There was a healing there. There was a healing there of some sort. Now, I say all of that to say this. People are going to hurt you, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. And uh, sometimes it's people that you would normally trust. And that's going to happen. And as Christians, we need to deal with that. Maybe this is a good time to go into a whole lesson on how to forgive and all of that again. But I'm not going to because we're almost out of time. But um, it's, it's important for us as Christians to learn and discover forgiveness. How to forgive and how to be forgiven. That's really, really important. Because you know what? God's calling on your life is bigger than the issue. God's ministry for you is bigger than the, than the complexity. It's, it's something, God said, by this will all men know that you're my disciples, that you love one another. You see, God's called you to be a disciple. And so it's, it's not that by this will people know that you're good church members, that you, you get along, because nobody's going to say that about Baptists. But what Jesus said was, by this will they know that you're my, disi- you're my disciples if you love one another. God's people who love God's people love God's people who love God's people. Did you get that? So it's important for us to understand that we are going to get hurt. Sometimes it's by our own, but sometimes it's not by our own. Sometimes it's by people who don't believe the way we believe. Sometimes we're going to be hurt by people who have no connection to our faith. Sometimes it's going to be by people who just simply don't like us. Sometimes it's the result of spiritual warfare. Many times it's the result of spiritual warfare. There are times when people just don't like you because of your spirit. And it is important for us to understand that we are going to come across those people and sometimes they're going to react and sometimes we're going to be hurt. And Psalm 70, verse 1 and 2 says, Make haste, O God, to deliver me, O Lord. Make haste to help me. Let them be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let them be turned back and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Here you go. Through your suffering you can reveal the nature and character of God. Jesus did. Through your suffering, you can reveal the character and nature of God. And that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. As God's people, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Isn't that what Jesus said when he said, the things that I do, you'll do greater? The works that I do, you'll do greater works. Isn't that what Jesus said about his people, his followers? So we have the responsibility to continue the work. We're called the church. We're called the body of Christ. That means that we continue the ministry of Christ. That's what we're supposed to do. We're to reveal the character and nature of Christ. Well, how does that happen? It happens in suffering. 
It happens other ways also, but it certainly should happen in suffering. So when you're hurt, when you're suffering, focus on how to reveal the character and nature of Christ because that's what God's looking to do in and through your life during those times. Let's pray. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a